It's 12 o'clock, and you're watching KCCI Channel 8 Des Moines, Iowa's news leader, with Molly Cooney, Jason Hoffman, and meteorologist Mike Lozano. This is News Channel 8. The case against a man authorities say could be the elusive Unabomber may have gotten a little stronger today after a search of the suspect's Montana home. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Molly Cooney. And I'm Jason Hoffman. Federal investigators say they have found a partial bomb and diagrams on how to make bombs inside the home of Ted Kaczynski. Now, he is the man the FBI arrested yesterday in connection with a series of mail bombings. We go more to have more on this from Manuel Gallegas from Montana. Well, we're outside the federal building here in Helena, Montana, where Unabomber suspect Theodore Koshinsky was just brought in for his arraignment by U.S. Marshals. Now, so far, he is only expected to be charged with one count of possessing a bomb, a device apparently found inside his cabin. Unabomber suspect Theodore Koshinsky had a slight smile on his face as he was escorted by federal agents to the courthouse in Helena. Koshinsky, seen here in a 1962 Harvard yearbook, is a Chicago native. Relatives going through some writings at a house he lived in tipped off authorities. I can more about it than I do, really. Koshinsky's mother and his brother, who called the authorities, did not talk to reporters this morning as they left their home in Glenville, New York. But the former head of the Unabomber task force is talking about Kaczynski's capture. I, I'm just pleased that, uh, you know, the, the individual that uh, we've been looking for for over 17 years is finally in custody. Theodore Kaczynski is described as a loner by the people who live in the small town of Lincoln, as being very quiet and shy. A former Harvard classmate of Kaczynski remembers him this way. Nothing seemed angry to, to us or toward us. Uh, I think he was just shy, as my impression, although very strangely so. A former FBI agent who worked on the Unabomber task force says that FBI agents believe they do have the right suspect. For now, he is only charged with, or will only be charged with one count of a, making a bomb that is designed to keep him in jail until the FBI can figure out its next move. Reporting from Helena, Montana, I'm Manuel Gallegos, CBS News. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Manuel. And in other news, in Washington, President Clinton ordered flags flown at half-staff to mourn the deaths of Commerce Secretary Ron Brown and 32 others. Brown and the others died when their military jet crashed in Croatia while trying to land in stormy weather. Byron Harlan has the latest. The news about the crash site is as grim and hopeless as most everyone feared. This is a very sad day and a, a very sad place. It is the place where Commerce Secretary Ron Brown and 32 others on board a military plane were killed and where the evidence shows there was no explosion. The aircraft is not completely destroyed. Uh, it's, uh, the bodies are not completely destroyed. And the horrendous chore of recovering and identifying the bodies is underway, although the White House spokesman says Ron Brown's body has been identified. The one woman who survived the crash died on the way to the hospital. The other major task will be to figure out why the plane veered off course and crashed into the hill north-northwest of the landing strip. There is no so-called black box on the military version of a Boeing 737, so the investigators will have to piece together any evidence they can find to understand what happened. Uh, they've had a number of weather problems uh, at Dubrovnik. But uh, it looks like the team is now on the ground and will very quickly move up to the site to be uh, begin the investigation. The morning has begun in Washington. Dark emotions on a bright spring day. Flags fly at half-staff throughout the city and on public buildings as well as military bases. The president has canceled his schedule today. He, as well as friends and family, will reflect privately on the loss during a short prayer service. Byron Harlan, CBS News, Washington. In local news today, Jasper County authorities still are searching for a car they think may be responsible for the death of a Knoxville man. 48-year-old Oren Peterson of Knoxville was killed last night when the motorcycle he was riding on apparently was hit by a car. The accident took place near Newton on State Highway 14. Officials say they are looking for an early 1980s Ford car that is light brown or tan metallic in color. The car has left side damage and also might have damage from other accidents. That damage could be highlighted by red paint. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Jasper County Sheriff's Office.
The man convicted in the execution-style murder of Christopher Little has been sentenced to life in prison. Randy Jones was convicted last month of first-degree murder. Testimony during his week-long trial indicated that Jones methodically hunted Little down after an early morning argument in front of Jones' home. Jones, drunk, stoned, and armed with a 22 caliber pistol, had made several racial remarks before the killing. Little was found dead in a vacant lot, killed with a single point-blank shot to the temple. Convicted rare book thief Stephen Blumberg will be returning to Des Moines tomorrow. A U.S. district judge has ordered Blumberg return to Iowa for a hearing to determine if he is mentally competent to understand a probation revocation proceeding. Now, Blumberg was released from prison last December after being convicted of stealing thousands of rare books from libraries across the United States and in Canada. But authorities issued a warrant for his arrest when he did not report to probation officials. Police say an 18-year-old Jefferson man has been arrested and charged with taking the tabernacle and ciborium from a church in Perry. Prosecutors charged David Cannon with second-degree theft in connection with the January incident. The items, which are worth several thousand dollars, were used to hold the altar breads used for Holy Communion at St. Patrick's Church. They have not been recovered. The all-new dancers at Ames Only Juice Bar are now dancing under a new name and new ownership. And the city says the business still is legal. The story in from News Channel 8's Live Link. The former Big Earl's gold mine, too, is now called Blondie's. According to the State Department of Revenue and Finance records, the new owner is Tina Bryson of Urbandale. But the name and ownership change won't change under the juice bar's legal status. Ames City Attorney John Kloss says Blondie's can continue to offer all-new dancing. That's because the bar was in operation before the city banned juice bars from opening within 1,000 feet of residences, churches, schools, and other common public areas. If you're planning any traveling over the Easter weekend, be prepared to pay a little bit more at the gas pump. The Iowa AAA fuel survey reports that today that no lead self-service gas costs $1.18 on the average across the state. That's four cents more than last year at this time and eight cents a gallon more than the last survey in February. Congressman Jim Ross Lightfoot says he is ready to debate State Representative Steve Grubbs of Davenport and State Senator Maggie Tinsman of Davenport. The three are fighting for the GOP's third district nomination in the June primary. Lightfoot says his competitors have more time to campaign since his campaigning will be limited to weekends. Well, it hampers, uh, sure. It'd be nice to be out here and campaign full time, but uh, uh, on the other end of the coin, when we're here, we'll use. Uh, use every minute we have available to us. The debate will take place in Des Moines on April 12th, Cedar Rapids on June 2nd, and Sioux City on June 3rd. The Iowa legislature has adjourned for the Easter holiday, but not without acting on a number of issues. The House wants to take money from the tracks and put it in the troughs of some local governments. Nearly $2 million in property taxes would be collected from the state's four paramutual tracks, $1.4 million of which coming from Prairie Meadows. The bill's approval in the Senate is uncertain. Is that other car you see from Iowa? Soon it may be easier to tell. A bill before the governor would limit the number of specialty plates on vehicles, a plan favored by law enforcement officials. The new standard plates would include a so-called rent-a-space section for stickers promoting various causes. The House also decided that Governor Branstad could continue turning over some state government duties to private businesses. An amendment would prohibit uh, shifting the duties of a state worker to private businesses unless the private sector workers were paid as much as the state workers they replace. Well, the pressure is on. It's opening night at Sec Taylor, and mm -hmm. Easter's coming up for Easter egg hunts. That's it right. doesn't look too nice. I'm leaving town. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right after this newscast. With a bag I'm on leaving. your head. Yes. That's right. <laughs> you got that right. That's an old joke. Anyway, here's a look. Was it something we said, Mother Nature? Snow on Saturday? That's for sure. It's in the forecast. How much? Well, that's still up in the air. Shouldn't be much. But before you get too upset, last year, on this very date, the high was only 34. Oh, that makes us feel better? Kind of does me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just make it easier to hide those Easter eggs. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks. Well, still to come on News Channel 8 today at noon, the victims in a videotape police beating speak out. And the moon disappeared in some areas of the U.S. last night. We'll find out what that's all about <laughs> when we return. Closed captioning of News Channel 8 is brought to you as a public service by KCCI and the cardiologist surgeons and staff at the Iowa Heart Center. You are watching News Channel 8 on Central Iowa's number one station. In California, law enforcement officials vow there will be no cover-up in the case of videotaped police beating of a number of suspected illegal aliens. Sandra Hughes has more from both the investigation and the victims. 
In an interview from her hospital bed, Leticia Gonzalez, the woman seen being pulled from the truck and beaten by Riverside County deputies, has told a Spanish-language TV station she did nothing to provoke the officers. No les insulté nada. Yo no dije absolutamente nada. The 32-year-old woman displayed cuts and bruises she says were caused by the clubbing. She was very frightened, she said, and praying that she would not be killed. Earlier, all the Mexican nationals, including her husband, the other beating victim, were driven out of the Los Angeles Federal Building after being released from custody. They arrived a short time later at the Mexican consulate. Their group was arrested on Monday after the 80-mile two-county police chase that ended with this videotaped beating. Yesterday, the sheriff of Riverside County conceded his deputies were out of line. From what I saw on the videotape, it appears that there's a clear case of the excessive use of force. The two officers caught on tape, Tracy Watson and Kurt Franklin, both remain suspended with pay and have hired attorneys to counter the barrage of negative attention generated by the beating. Public officials and people in responsible positions have found them guilty already, and it's just scandalous. Immigration officials say they don't think they ever had the driver of the pickup truck in custody. The person many believe ultimately responsible because his driving was reckless and because he may have been the smuggler who brought the Mexicans into the United States in the first place. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, Los Angeles. In other news, the Free Men Militia Group may be more dangerous than previously thought. It appears that the group has ties to a religious cult, and the thought of children at risk is putting more pressure on the FBI. This story begins our look at news around the world this noon hour. The FBI stepped up patrols around the Freeman Ranch yesterday, but no sign of increased tension is apparent. A spokesman for them is offering a way to end the 10-day-old standoff. He says the members will surrender if they can answer to a grand jury created by their own court system. And they want that jury to convene at their ranch. Catholic Filipinos began a bloody three-day ritual today to recall the suffering of Jesus Christ. In several provinces, people gathered in the streets and beat themselves with sharp objects. Many had blood streaming from their faces and body wounds inflicted with broken glass, razor blades, and other homemade weapons. In the Philippines, the bloody rituals are also considered a way for followers to atone for their sins. More 21st century communications found their way to outer space. After two delays, a new satellite was launched and will be ready for use in mid-May. The satellite will be aimed at portable, notebook-style computers for operation without wires. International launch services will market this new service to 59,000 customers in 135 countries. From man-made orbits, Molly, we go to the moon, which was the site of a spectacular show last night. People in the eastern U.S. were treated to a total lunar eclipse. The moon had an eerie grayish-orange glow as the Earth's shadow passed over it. This was the first total lunar eclipse on the eastern seaboard since December 1992. We just want to see the sun, Mike. Yeah, yeah really. This, <laughs> and there, believe it or not, there's going to be a total solar eclipse. Unfortunately, it won't be able to be seen on this side of the Earth at all. When's we that to take a trip, out? right? Here in the next couple of days, about oh. seven days or something. But okay. if you're in China or Japan or something, you should be able to see uh, not, something. Not this week. Okay. No, not this week. Maybe next week. <laughs> hey, we've got all kinds of activity, including the four-letter word that begins with S. We'll be back after this. Meteorologist Mike Lozano has earned the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval for excellence in television weather casting. This News Channel 8 weather forecast is sponsored by Crimmins Cattle Company Steakhouse and Saloon. Well, kind of a nice day, sure, not as nice as it was yesterday, you say, but go down by the river, you'll forget all about the cold temperatures, that is, if you don't freeze to death first. Photographer Mike Sims took this picture, a nice gently rolling river the raccoon. At least it's in liquid form and not iced over. 32 right now, cloudy skies, winds out of the north at 20, gusting to 25. The wind chill, 7 degrees. Not dangerous, but a little bit on the uncomfortable side, especially after the 75 degree temperatures we had just a couple of days ago. 23, the dew point, relative humidity at 69%. The barometer's rising, 30.23 inches of mercury. Here's a look across the state. 
find out exactly what's going on. Now, normally at this time of the year, we get up to about 57 degrees after an overnight low of 36. Last year, on the same day, 34. That was the high, 19. The overnight low pretty closely parallels what tonight's low will be. We're expecting it to go down to 18 degrees tonight. The daytime high, probably about 36, maybe hitting up to 37 degrees, but I doubt it. 31 degrees right now at Mason City, 34 degrees at Burlington, 30 at Dubuque, 34 degrees at Audubon, 35 degrees at Clorinda, 34 over here at Council Bluffs, 31 at both Sioux City and Spencer. Here's a look at the national map, show you exactly what's going on. Low pressure sitting out here just to the southeast of Chicago, dragging behind that a massive cold front, goes all the way on to Texas. Look at the difference. On this side, Wichita, Kansas, today's high, 31 degrees. You jump the line, 30 degrees higher in San Antonio, Texas. That cold front goes stationary up against the lee side of the Rocky Mountains, tries to press back over this general direction, but is not doing it very, very efficiently. Here's a look at the satellite, show you exactly what's going on, and if the old voice will hang in there long enough, very, very heavy thunderstorm activity. It's at front, swept on down towards the south. Extremely heavy thunderstorm activity out around the uh, northeastern uh, Texas area. That moved into Louisiana and Arkansas, but filtered out finally into just general shower activity there. Still getting some reports of very, very uh, heavily damaged areas in northeastern Texas. In our neck of the woods, basically cold air filtering down here. That cold air is going to stay with us for the next couple of days. Got a Low pressure system forming over here may come sweeping through the plains, give us a chance of snow when? Probably on Saturday. Sounds like adding insult to in injury. It certainly is, but that's the way things go at this time of the year when the weather's changing. 17, that's going to be the high today, Minneapolis, St. Paul, 29 degrees in Kansas City, 18 degrees Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 25 in Chicago, 33 at St. Louis, 19 degrees at Green Bay. Here's a look at the forecast for central Iowa. See how it's going to shape up. Mostly cloudy skies. It'll be windy and cold. Winds out of the north at 15 to 30 with a high of 36 degrees. Then tonight, partly cloudy and cold. Winds out of the north at 5 to 10. The overnight low, 18 degrees. For tomorrow, partly cloudy. Winds light and variable. The high, 44 degrees. And the extended forecast, there it is. On Saturday, that chance of snow. Sunday and Monday, though, look a little bit better. Still not getting up to those normal temperatures. But 45, it'll have to do for a high. Wow. That's, it'll have to do. It'll Ooh. have to do. Still have That's that theory? A, we just all turn our heat up and open windows and the thing. And pretend. Yeah. Well, remember no. when the when the red buds have been in bloom and yes, there's a coating yes, of snow yes, that thick yeah. on them? So and it's nice, happened before. It. Well, you can hide the Easter eggs under the snow. There you go. Trick, <laughs> Easy trick to the find. Easter Bunny. Okay. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thank well, you. Well, there's still more to come. Uh, more and more Iowans are finding themselves facing big financial problems. We'll find out why and what you can do after a look at today's financial news. minute weather information day or night call the news channel 8 super doppler forecast at 262-7173 sponsored by widely eye care centers casino gambling came to prairie meadows racehorse track in altoona one year ago and since then the track has been earning two and a half times what was projected for the number of visitors money wagered and profits earned in fact some officials say the debt may be paid off next year but with that brings a higher number of calls to the gambling assistance line as not everyone hits the jackpot. In fact, more and more people are facing financial ruin, and we want to find out what can be done and why. With me today is Tom Coates, and he's executive director of the Consumer Credit Counseling Service here in Des Moines. Thanks, Tom, for coming in again. Always a pleasure. We've been talking about this, a big anniversary this week, and it also means more business for you. Why? Well, uh, we can talk about the number of calls that are being received, the 1-800-BETS-OFF um, hotline crisis calls that the, um, that the helpline, is what they're referring to it now, is receiving, is up significantly uh, from what we were just seeing just a few months back. Part of that is the um, increase in publicity. The public relations campaign has been increased, and so obviously there's more calls there. But I think the, uh, the level of impoverishment 
on the part of some people. What they're experiencing is the, the pain and, and the problems have escalated to the point that more and more people are now needing help. They ran out of money. They, they've spent a fun year and now it's, they're hitting also credit cards lines, I understand. That, I think, is a very important issue. Uh, the money, unfortunately, doesn't just come from their pocket. It comes from the extraction of the lines of credit that they have, the credit cards. And that's an issue that the Iowa legislature started to visit. I think some of the legislation was poorly crafted. But eight out of the ten most active ATM machines in the state of Iowa are located in casinos. The question I've been asking and have yet to have answered for me is how many of those extractions, how much of that activity is the result of pulling cash advances from credit cards right. versus pulling money out of your bank account. I think a large segment of it is. What are you telling people who call and come in? Well, we have to tell them first you have to deal with, with the core problem. And if there is a gambling at the core problem, we estimate a large percentage of our people that are coming in for credit counseling now have problem gambling as a center, they can't deal with the financial manifestations of that problem until they get at the core of the problem. And that's to get an assessment, get some counseling, get the blood flow stopped, and then we can start hopefully repaying those debts. The uh, rate of increase in bankruptcy in the state of Iowa last year was alarming. A 20% increase in 95 versus 94. Uh, that lays against the rest of the country at 5.5% increase, 95 versus 94. And Iowa had a very healthy economy. And you feel some of this is due to the gambling? I think the biggest variable here, undoubtedly, in my mind, is fast action commercial gambling. It wasn't just done with, the, again, the money in the pocket. It was done with the credit. And who pays for an increase in bankruptcy? We all uh, do. We all do. What, just very quickly, what are we talking about? Are people coming in with $5,000 debt, $100,000? I mean, what is the worst? Uh, well, certainly, certainly both is the answer. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, gamblers have, in many cases, access to large lines and multiple lines of credit. And so it is very common for us now to see 30, 40, 50,000. I counsel a gentleman myself, had over 80,000 in credit card debt, all the result mm -hmm. of uh, financing a gambling habit. And while you're in this area of a, uh, almost institutionalized addiction and to have things flashing at you say pull the money out pull the money out pull the money right. out you've got a, an explosive problem asking for trouble all right if you have a problem or you know somebody who has a problem you can call 1-800-BETS-OFF or also contact the consumer credit counseling number at 287-6428 thanks for coming in tom and we'll be back with more right Thank after you. this well believe it or not we did break a record i guess or so yeah, of uh, sorts. warm weather first, first day of spring contest 75 or over on april 2nd mike draw for a lawn boy right. silver series mower we're going to do one more tomorrow Let's one see. today one tomorrow good grief now, i've got my card out of the hundreds of entries i've got my card in here it's one of the little yes. notches and the winner is mike it's we, need me. A, we need a snow blower instead of a uh, lawnmower. looks like frank prusman of uh, Blairsburg. Blairsburg, Iowa. All Frank, right. congratulations. congratulations. Tune right. in tomorrow, see if you want yourself right. one way more. That'll do it for today. We'll see you back here tomorrow.